Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 3rd of 2017. I have had, here it is, I've had this radio for quite a while. A friend sent it to me, wanted me to check it out because I'm a amateur radio operator and because I also uh, and doing amateur radio and also doing digital. And I really have fallen down on the job. I had this radio early and I have, whoops, I'm holding it up to the microphone. I've had it early and I just haven't had time to thoroughly check it out. And another reason is I've got Let's see, let me put this here. Here is my ham radio that's uh, digital. And here's my other ham walkie talkie that is not digital. It's analog. And I have a couple computers, but these all use, these use different drivers. And I sort of hate to, everything is working, and I sort of hate to install another driver right now, and, uh, but I'm going to have to. So, this is a review of this TID Industrial Digital Walkie Talkie that is Moto Turbo Digital Radio. The model number of this is TD9800. This radio can be used for military purposes, business, uh, or for amateur radio. Now you'll have to uh, check with whatever, wherever you live in, you know, the world to make sure that it is approved for, you know, use in your country. It varies. Uh, in the United States, the Federal Communications Commission is the one that certifies. I'm sure in Canada it's something it's something different. Uh, since I haven't had time to really get in and, and check out everything about this, this is going to be version one. I will update, I'll make this in the video here. I will come back when I go to the next stage. This is going to be physically about the unit, uh, battery charger, that, that type of information. And then I will update the video later that will include, still include this part of, of it, but will include uh, me updating the BIOS using the software and uh, doing some programming of features in the radio. I uh, I spent over 30 years working in security, worked as a police officer for a while. Uh, had a lot of had a lot of jobs. When I was working security for those 30 years, I retired in 2000. Uh, we did not have digital, we didn't have digital radios. Uh, we used strictly analog. And I, I can't remember now if we were using, I know in the beginning we were using NICAD batteries. These, uh, these new batteries are so much, uh, so much better than the NICAD batteries. The NICAD batteries Ah, we're a pain, and these are so much better. Also, uh, the first walkie-talkies that I was at a hospital back in 1972, Motorola, and the radio cost, I think it was $1,000 $1, for each walkie-talkie. I believe that was the price for Motorola. And if you wanted uh, if you wanted it programmed,
frequencies put in, PL tones and things like that. Now they weren't digital. If you wanted any of that, you had to go to Motorola or what if, it, or if somebody if you bought from some other company, you had to go to those people and pay them quite a bit of money to make the change in the radio. Uh, now these radios you can they're digital on top of that and plus everything else the better batteries and the size and uh, you know waterproof and all the and rugged uh, and now you can program with your computer you can program them yourself put in the frequencies and uh, all the other options which we'll, which we'll kind of cover later uh, here you have the radio, here you have the programming cable, by the way, which it's laying over there, but you unscrew this and plug it into there, and then you plug it into the USB of your, of your computer. Um, you can import uh, contacts and you can import uh, frequencies and stuff like that. Uh, this stores up to 1,024 memories into 64 zones and there's 800 talk groups. Uh, so you, you have an unbelievable number of options that you can that you can do uh, you can have all of the people you want to communicate with on the same frequency or channel uh, or you can have them actually on the same channel but uh, because it's coded differently they won't eat you could also you could have you know your police department could be using, if you're a large police department or some large thing, you're going to have a communications department or whatever, and you can have them take care of, you know, the those options for you. If you're a small security company or a very small police department, I worked for one that was a very, very small police department, uh, you know, you can take care of the thing yourself. You could be a small police department in a small town. You could have your police on using one channel, your fire on another channel, your uh, city workers on another channel, animal control on another channel. But you could also have the options where they, if you, if you wanted it, you can have the option that you could set up so they could flip over and they could talk to each other. Uh, all types of the wait till you see the software the options that you have are really just you know amazing started to say a bad word here's the charger there's a charger with a battery in it and here's the radio you know with the battery in the radio and in the charger so you can purchase extra batteries you can purchase extra chargers if you want to. Comes with a belt clip. I didn't put the belt clip on. These are the charging ports down here. Make sure uh, that you always, when you transmit, that you always have an antenna on the plugged in. You know, working it, working on the radio. And you could probably cause some damage to the radio if it's if you transmit without having a battery. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, and eight, seven, three, two, one. If I remember correctly, you have the choice of Chinese or English. Uh, maybe more. It's a nice radio. I've got to. I've got to put the, the 
frequencies in here. Just got so much going on right at the present time. Uh, it has an IP67 rating. That has to do with, I think, dust, and, and I know it has to do with water. It operates both in digital and analog. So you can have frequencies in there that are not digital, and you can have, uh, you know, digital. Uh, talks about what it complies with. The frequency band, this is uh, UHF 400 to 470 megahertz. I believe the company sells a... Uh, this is KK4SER, KK4SER monitoring. That's digital. That's not this digital radio. That was a digital amateur radio. Uh, you notice the voice quality was really, you know, really good. I could answer back, and that that person's on the worldwide uh, digital channel amateur radio. You have to be for that. You have to be an amateur radio operator. Uh, for the rest, you're going to have to uh, depend on your country. Uh, you can uh, Motorola and other companies will let you use for a price their repeaters. So you get a vastly increased range, depending on, you know, if you're a, if you're a small business, small area, you can talk unit to unit. If you need wider coverage, there are companies that will, for a small amount of money, you would put in their frequency for their repeater and the information that they would give you or if you're signing up with them, uh, they, I'm sure they'd set your radios up for you in order to get you the customer, which would be very easy for them, or you can do it yourself. But you'd put in their frequencies. And so their repeater will be someplace up high, on top of a hill, on top of a uh, water tower, on top of a tall building or whatever, and you'd be able to reach, uh, instead of one, two, or three miles radio to radio, you'd be able to talk over an entire city. Or in this case, this is working through uh, a network. And uh, you can talk around the world on amateur radio if you're a licensed amateur radio operator, which in the United States is very easy uh, to become. If you get this radio, though, you can't, if you're buying it for amateur radio use, you have to be a licensed amateur, so you need to get your license. You can purchase it, but you need to get your license before you can transmit, because you do not want a large fine or the FCC coming to your door. Uh, they give you here, uh, for the programming software, they give you the link to get it. They also, and I'm not sure if they do it there or not, I think they did here someplace. They give you the, uh, maybe down here, yeah, they do, to get a new updated driver. From time to time, these uh, radios, they may come uh, with uh, an improvement to it and an added feature, or they fix something that they uh, find doesn't work the way it should. And so you download the uh, file and then you upgrade your it upgrades your computer or your uh, your radio uh, upgradable software specifications channels you can look at all this here okay here's the software and i already downloaded the software and now i can't remember whether i did the firmware upgrade on this or not, but I can look up, uh, this comes with an instruction book, by the way, a manual. I can look up the, it'll tell me what version firmware. And if I try to install the, the it also, 
if the software version was already installed, it wouldn't let me install it. Uh, or if, if I happen to have an old file and if this was newer, it would uh, say, no, you already have, you know. Uh, let me see if somebody did their... Uh... Well, questions here. Uh, does the package include a programming cable? Yes, it does. Uh, let's see. What is the distance range? It says here 5 to 8 kilometers. Uh, that I'm not sure. It's going to depend on the on the terrain that you're in, whether you have a flat surface or whether, you know, you're on top of a hill and, and it's going to depend. Five to eight, I, let me say three to five miles. Uh, don't hold me to any of that. Okay, this has got, oh, I feel so bad that because uh, somebody, I think I got this radio before any of these people, and I haven't. Here's a reviewer. Uh, he did his review on November 9th of 2016. If you need a reliable DNM, DMR radio, then that is a great choice. He gives it five stars. You can read what he has to say. He has the pros and cons of it. Uh, somebody else gives it five stars. Great DMR radio for business, government, and ham radio. So you can check that out. Also, someone bid a big <coughs> review. John, another ham radio operator, K3NXU. And uh, he talks, well, let me mention the yeah, because he's got, it's a 2,500 milliamp battery, 7.4 volts. You get the charger base and the AC adapter. Comes with the antenna, belt clip, a hand strap. I never use a hand strap. Programming cable and a 24-page English manual. Uh, he says that it's, you know, UHF, the frequency, 400 to 470 megahertz. Uh, does DMR tier two uh, FM capable? One watt or four watts. You can change, you know. And in the settings, you can put for when you're going to be when you put the frequencies in, you can put what you want when you go to that frequency, whether you want it to be low power or high power. Of course, you can change it. On the radio, you know, if, if you decided to, to change it, but you can uh, fully upgradable firmware. Let's see. Yeah, definitely, this feels. This is quality. This is rugged, and it is quality. Uh, and so he goes on. I will. Does a really good job. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm going to end this here. Let me give you another. Let me give you a good look at the radio. And I will update this video uh, I may redo the entire video because this first part kind of sucks anyway I do recommend this radio and I'm going to uh, drive here very soon to show you the programming of the uh, of the radio 
how you put the frequencies in and what it looks like and the settings and the things you can do with the software. So thank you very much for, uh, for watching this.